So meditation is actually in two parts, uh, the concentration and the contemplation. So when we talk about meditation, it's not just sitting there peacefully and relax the body, not just that. Meditation is in two major portions. Um, now, the meditation that we are uh, practicing is in accordance with the Buddhist teaching on Anapanasati, which is the in and out breath meditation. So we have to identify that because there's so many other methods of meditation, some yogic meditation, transcendental meditation, all kinds of meditation. They, they attach terms and names to meditation. But Anapanasati in an out breath meditation is what the Buddha 2,600 years ago introduced to us. This is what, where we are concentrating in. If we use the Sanskrit language, the original classical Indian language as spoken by the Buddha, it's samatha and vipassana, samatha and vipassana. And we use concentration to translate samatha, but um, it, that's not really the right term for it. But you see, it's sometimes it's difficult to find the most appropriate translation for, to represent the meaning of some of the Sanskrit language, of some words, so we use concentration. Actually, um, the concentration, samatha is to relax the body and calm down the mind to a level where you attain uh, samadhi. Relax the body, calm the mind to a level that you arrive at samadhi. That's samatha. We just use the word concentration. It's not just to focus, to concentrate, you know, to, to focus at a point. It's not just that, you know. So keep in mind, that's the proper translation. And contemplation, uh, this English word contemplation is the mind thinking about something, pondering about something, or something with ruminating about something. But actually contemplation is, when we use the word, English word contemplation, it seems to be you are watching outside and then you contemplate something outside. But actually, this kind of contemplation, the Sanskrit word vipassana, is introspection. You contemplate the inside of your mind, not to outside, not going outside. But for the sake of understanding, we use contemplation, so that's what we're using. Now, in concentration, as is indicated here, we use three methods to do it counting, following, and stabilization. That's on relaxation and calming. And then, once you achieve these, then you go to, an, to a, a higher level in which you introspect. Then you go to introspection and turning. And we've been talking on counting and following uh, for a number of hours already, uh, following the breath. We already talked about that in detail. I mean, counting the breath. And if, if the counting procedure is well done, you are successful in finishing the counting training is successful, is well done after a while. How long? It varies from, pe from person to person. It could be one year, could be half a year, could be 10 years, 20 years, could be a lifetime long and you haven't arrived at successfully completing counting. So we can attach a time to it. And then if your counting is successfully, is well done, which we already have talked in detail for two or three hours already, then you go to following. Then you go to following the breath, not just counting, follow the breath. And following the breath, how do we know that we are successfully finished the training, a self-training of following the breath, there are 16 superior phenomena of practicing following. These are the criteria you use to judge, have I been successful in following the 16 uh, superior phenomena of practicing following? And we already have gone through that 
for a couple of hours already. So we're not going to go through it again. And then in following, after you cultivate a following, then every one of these items, when we talk about them, every one of these, we use two perspectives to talk about it. One is the cultivation of it, or cultivation of counting. The other one is the realization of counting. Then we talk about the cultivation of following, then the realization of following. The cultivation is the method of doing it. The realization, what's the effect after you have done it? So, um, last time we have uh, arrived, uh, we've finished the cultivation of following. Now let's get to the realization of following. When the practitioner becomes aware of the breath as now long, as now short, as now permeating the body, and now going out, the mind and the breath are in a state of mutual independence. They're related. In normal life, we don't realize our breath. We just take the breath granted. It's a spontaneous action. But then, when you follow it well, the mind actually know, actually know, now the breath comes in, now the breath go out, now the breath is long, the breath is short. In other words, it becomes mutually independent. The mind and the breath has become fine, subtle, peaceful, and still, equanimity, quiescent. In other words, you follow it so well that the breath and the mind, they are one. They're not different. Now the breath and the mind are, are different. They're not, they're not mutually independent. Only in mutually independent when you say, I'm going to realize my breath now. Yes, my mind is now concentrating on the breath. For that particular moment, that you want to concentrate, then you have a mutual independence. Otherwise, you don't have a mutual independence. But now, it's spontaneous, automatic, mutual independence. Next, the petitioner becomes aware that following is a course activity. When you come to a point when the breath in a state of, the mind and the breath in a state of mutual independence, then you come to a peacefulness. That's what we call samadhi, samadhi. Samadhi has different level. So you, you are at a lower level of samadhi, but there's still a samadhi. There's sometimes you call it an absorption, meditative absorption in a samadhi, in a equanimity. Now, when you become aware of that equanimity, then the practitioner would think in his mind, following is still an attachment. I am attaching to following. I don't want to attach to anything. I'm free. Attachment is a course activity. Why should I attach to following? Then the mind becomes adverse to it and, and work to relinquish it. I don't want any attachment. First of all, I don't want to attach to fame, reputation, greediness, hatred, jealousy. I don't want to attach to this. Not to, and now, I don't even want to attach to following. I'm free, I'm liberated. So following becomes a course activity. You don't want to attach even to that. At this time, he should relinquish following and cultivate stabilization. Then you're going to the next level, which is stabilization, which is the last procedure in, in what? In concentration. Okay, now let's get to the next one. How do we come to stabilization? While counting on following with single-pointedness, the practitioner becomes aware of the body and mind, seeming to vanish entirely, entering into meditative absorption. So when you're successfully doing following, successfully completed following and counting, then your mind becomes what? Your whole body is relaxed, and your mind becomes very, very calm, relaxed and calm, and then you come to an equanimity, peacefulness, and you don't even feel you exist. The body and mind seem to vanish. I don't have a body. I don't have a mind. You feel that way, entering into meditative absorption. Then you know that you have successfully completed counting and successfully completed following. Now 
you are going into stabilization. He gains realization of an empty and still absorption through which he becomes aware of the body and mind as quiescent, secure, blissful. Your mind becomes quiescent in complete standstill and peacefulness and quietude, solitude. The solitude is so blissful, so secure that you never tasted before, like you never have before. We can't even describe it. Is some sort of blissfulness, some sort of security, some sort of quiescence that in your whole life before you haven't felt that way, and you wouldn't give it up for millions of dollars because you can't you can't buy it for any money. It just come to you in a very relaxed, calming way. I don't know how to describe it. So. Nothing whatsoever is taken as an objective condition or is bore in mind. Nothing is important to you anymore. Not your, not your money, not your relationship, not all those that you attach to, not your addiction, not your alcoholic attitude, not your temperament. Nothing in your mind. All those vanishes. Nothing. Bother you anymore? Imagine if nothing bothered your mind anymore. Not a tinkling of mental affliction bother your mind anymore. How do you feel? You haven't felt that before, because your mind has always been bothered by something. You may not even noticed it. So, as it is so controlled that it becomes focus and stillness. Bringing all recollection, rumination, and expectation to a halt. Every everything comes to a to a standstill. What is recollection? Your past, the agonies of the past, the happiness of the past. You don't attach to them anymore. No recollection, rumination of the present. At the present, you're you you you're, you're free of all attachment. Expectation of the future. You don't worry about it. You don't have anxiety for the future anymore. Worry is about the past. Anxiety is about the future. So the past, the present, and the future all comes to a standstill. No time concepts. No space concept. We are confined. An individual is confined by time and space. Both physically and mentally. Now all these boundaries, all these perimeters are all gone. Bang! Nothing exists. No more burden. It seems as if you have been burdening your shoulders with millions of pounds of weight. Now all this burden is gone. How do you feel? This is samadhi. This is samadhi, meditative absorption. You can arrive. Everybody can arrive at that point. It's in you. You just don't know how to get it. It's just that all this oil in Alberta. You have to tap into it. You have to drill it. It's got to be there. But you don't know how to do it. You got to all go all over the place to drill it. The fact that you can't find any oil underground does not mean that the oil doesn't exist. It exists there. It belongs to you. You just don't know how to get it. You possess that. You possess that nature. You possess that Buddha nature. You possess that enlightenment. You possess that Anutra Samya Sambuddhi, the Tathagata, the Suchness, the Buddha in you, the Buddhahood in you. You got that in you. It's just been covered up by ignorance, greediness, hatred, and all mental afflictions. And with all these karmic mental afflictions, we have been reincarnating into some zero of life and death for millions of years. Poor, we are poor. We are poor individuals. We're all victims of some zero. The Buddha are victims already, and he told us, "You can do it too. It's just you don't. You're not guided. You're always in attachment of karmic." You have all kinds of karmic attachments. You know, you know what kind of attachment you have. The karmic energy that you've been building up. So this is samadhi. 
But he gradually feels that it is devoid of any skillful means related with wisdom. Then, because you have successfully doing, doing um, following, then you say, following. How is it related to the truth of the universe? How is it related to my existence? How is it related to everybody's existence? How is it related to wisdom? Previously, when we are doing following, counting, following, and, and um, civilizations, it's all related to, to what? Concentration. Now, you're, you, you go into a higher level of thinking about wisdom. Then you're going into what? Contemplation, introspection. Because you have successfully going into, you finished the stabilization already. We finished with samadhi. We finished with the concentration. In other words, we successfully have, through meditation, successfully have arrived at a relaxed body, calm, calm mind, equanimity, quiescent, security, blissfulness. We success in doing that. Then we get into a higher level, which is the vipassana, which is getting the truth of the universe, the truth about yourself, the truth about existence, the truth about how come everybody appear that way? What am I, what's my position in the universe? Why can I get out from all these? So, so much to venture into that if you're at that point, you don't want to give up. At that point, you're not interested in fame and reputation anymore. You are not interested in money anymore. You're not really interested in relationship anymore. You are only interested in pursuit of spiritual wisdom, which would elevate you for elimination, for liberation. A free, totally free liberation from samsara. Okay. Now the practitioner's mind is immersed in absorption. This absorption is the same as samadhi, in samadhi. He begins to introspect his fine and subtle in and out breath as a wind in the midst of space. It's still the breath. The, the breath is still there. So as I said, breath is the basic. If you haven't practiced and successfully well done in your breath, you lost the basic. You still feel the breath. But the breath is not, more, it's not breath anymore. It seems to be some wind in the universe, in the middle of space. In the middle of space, it seems to be just, I have, I have no body. I have just a feeling of a wind in space. I'm not me. He also begins to introspect all the 36 categories of his own body are devoid of substantiality. Even his own consciousness is impermanent. Neither oneself nor anybody exists. So in other words, he could actually see, because it's an internal introspection, he, can, he, he could actually see, for some people, all the organs inside his body. He sees his own bone, flesh, skin, heart, kidney. He actually see them in the body. And you know that these are devoid of substan substantiality. These are insubstantial. It used to be, this is my body, this is my heart, this is my lung, this is my spleen, this is my bone, this is, this is everything about me. I have an existence. This is me, this is I. This is what I protect. But in that case, it's not substantial anymore. It's what? It's sunyata. It's sunyata and anicca. Sunyata is emptiness. Anicca, impermanent. Even his own consciousness is impermanent. There's no, there's nothing. It's sunyata. You understand what I mean? Of course we don't understand. You know why? Because we haven't arrived at that point. We only understand from what the Buddha told us. This is what the Buddha told us. How could we understand? We're not there yet. If you haven't been to Victoria, 
It does not matter how I, t- I describe Victoria to you. You can only understand in words, in my description. You, don't, you, you haven't really truly understood Victoria unless you step on shore. This is the parliament building, or this is the shoreline, this is other buildings. You actually have arrived there to understand. But it does not mean that you don't need any knowledge about Victoria. We got this knowledge from the Buddhists talking about it, but we haven't been there yet. But the Buddha said, you will be there if you're doing all this. Do you want to be there? Most people say, I don't know. They just keep on going, reincarnation and reincarnation. Life and death, life and death, and life and death. Suffering, sickness, as I said, what is usually a normal person's time dimensions? The past, the present and the future. What is the past? We think of yesterday is the past, one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. The most recent past is at birth. The remote past is many lifetimes ago. Yesterday is not past enough. Ten years ago is not past enough. At birth, when you were, in the, when you were a baby, is that past enough? We consider as, as, as a recent past. Your past at birth. What is your future? What is your future? Your recent future. You, everybody has that recent future. Death. That's your recent future, right? What is in between? What is in between? You know. What is in between? For sure. Aging. Right? Right? Can you refute that? No, I'm not aging. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to, uh, you know, I don't know how you call it. Um, exercise myself, keeping myself young and uh, facelift. And uh, what else? Cosmetics, ointment, perfume. Does not matter. You're always aging. We're always aging. So, now you are in, in, in introspection and you think about life, not just concentration anymore. You successfully complete concentration. Now you think about the Buddha realized Anuttva Samya Sambuddhi and he got out, he was liberated from life and death. He's not going into another round of reincarnation. I don't want to go into another round of life and death. I know if I go through another life and death, I'll be suffering as if I'm suffering now. 